Hello everyone, welcome to another video on spinners. So in this video, we are, we, are, we are going to cover the block sphere in quantum mechanics. And there are basically two people that are going to watch this video. There are physics students, and then there are quantum computing students. Now in this video, I'm going to talk about spinners, but the concepts here will transfer directly to, to, to quantum computing. So when I say spinner, that's analogous to a qubit for quantum computing folks. And when I say spin up, that's analogous to on and spin down is analogous to off. So. In this video, I'm going to give the, the kind of physics perspective to the block sphere, but the concept is directly transfer to quantum computing. So when, if, if I say spinner, that's just qubit for you quantum computing folks. Spin up is on, spin down is off. So let's start. So a spinner, if we can recall, I'll, I'll actually write it here instead. A spinner is just a superposition of spin up and spin down, where A and beta are generally complex numbers, okay? And recall that the probability of getting spin up on measurement is just A times A complex conjugate, and the probability of getting spin down is beta times beta conjugate. So this directly implies that uh, the modulus squared of A, of A plus the modulus squared of beta should be equal to one. They should all be review. Okay. Now, we are we are going to try to um kind of manip manipulate this equation, uh, in a way where we can make most of our um degrees of freedom real. So, what do I mean by this? So, in this video, we are going to try to make there be only one complex degree of freedom and then two real degrees of freedom. And you're gonna see what I mean by that as we go along. So to do that, we need to motivate the concept of a phase factor. So let's say I multiply e to the i phi by my general spinner state. What happens? Well, this is just e to the i phi times a spin up plus beta spin down, which equals um, e to the i phi a spin up plus e to the i phi beta spin down. And this, and this is the face factor multiplied by the spinner. So of course my spinner has changed, but if you notice the probability of, of, of getting spin up and spin down a measurement don't actually change because the probability, probability of getting spin up well, actually, we can think think of this term as like one big A prime, and then this term as one big beta prime. So the, prob so the probability of getting spin up on um, a measurement is going to be A prime times A prime complex conjugate, which is equal to e to the i phi A times e to the minus i phi A conjugate. And, and that's just A times a conjugate, since e to the i phi times e to the minus i phi comes down to being one. And we, we can make the same argument for the spin down direction. This is just uh, beta prime times beta prime conjugate, which is e to the i phi beta times e to the minus i phi beta conjugate, which is just beta times beta conjugate. So we see that the actual physical probabilities don't change when we multiply our spinner by a phase factor, since the resulting since the resulting probabilities are the same ones, even if you didn't add that phase factor, and this is because the phase factor is a complex exponential, so the complex numbers um, the complex um, number in the in the exponent will cancel out. Okay, so we we are, are going to kind of exploit this concept to um, kind of ma manipulate our degrees of freedom. All right. So, what's next? So yeah, um, what 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 we are we are going to do is we are going to rewrite a as r a e to the i phi a 
and respectively B as so not B beta. Let me try this whole thing again. Um, so A is R A E to the I phi A defined. Unless we rewrite beta as R beta E to the I phi beta. So what do we mean by this? Well, R A and R beta are going to be real numbers, okay? And phi A and phi beta are also going to be real numbers. Okay, so you guys might, 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 be wondering, might be wondering, why are we changing A, A and beta into these numbers? Well, we don't actually really change anything here. Because we can write any complex number in terms of um, um, R A and E to I phi A for A, and R beta E to I phi beta for beta, right? Because what, what we're doing here is we're splitting up the complex number A into a real part and a complex part. And then for beta, a real part and a complex part. That's all we're doing here. All right. And what we have is we have four degrees of, well, we have four real numbers, which are degrees of freedom for our system. And yeah. So what do we do now? Well, let's take our spinner. Remember that our spinner was just A spin up plus beta spin down. And again, we can, we can rewrite A and beta in terms of, of this real part and this complex part. Since we can achieve all real, all complex numbers by, by splitting it up into an exponential and some scalar real, num real number constant. So we have R A E to the I phi A spin up plus R beta E to the I phi beta spin down. All right. Now let's calculate the probability of getting a spin up on measurement. So that's just going to be R A E to the I phi A times R A E to the minus I phi A. These cancel out. Now we have R A squared. And analogously for spin down, it's it's going to be R beta squared. This is really cool because we just found out that the probability of getting it uh, getting a spin up, we don't have to apply any complex conjugate to this um, R A term, it's just R A squared. So we probably, so we probably can spin up, uh, we get a real number squared. No, no, it's no, it's no longer a complex number squared since the complex part cancels out with, with each other. So this is why we actually wrote um, A and beta in terms of these real and complex parts. Because, um, here we had, wait, where is it? Because here we had the probability of getting spin up is A, A conjugate, and then beta, beta conjugate. But now we don't have to apply any conjugate since the conjugate part just goes away in the exponential. Now I just have R A squared and R beta squared. They are per perfectly real. So real numbers can be e easier to deal with. So, so we're going to now take this concept, concept and kind of run with it. So, I remember, yeah, let, me, let me try this on, on a new page. So, again, remember that psi is now R A E to the I phi A spin up plus R beta E to the I phi beta spin down. Now, we were going to do the exact same thing we did before, but with, but with this like reformulation kind of of the spinner. So we're going to multiply this by some phase factor, e to the i phi a. And that's e to the i phi a times r a e to the i phi a spin up plus r beta e to the i phi beta spin down. This should be a phi a, by the way. So, in, so here we have r a e to the i phi a times, oh, sorry. This should actually be an e to the minus i phi a. That's our phase factor, e to the minus i phi a. Oh, that's the phase, phase factor that we are going to impose on psi. So here we have r a e to the i minus phi a times e to the i phi a. Again, we're just distributing this um, e to the minus i phi a term to our terms, plus r beta e to the minus i phi a e to the i phi beta spin down. All right. And remember, again, adding a, um, 
phase factor to our spinner shouldn't change the resulting fundamental probabilities of observing some measurement of observing some of spin state upon measurement that's what i mean so these will just cross cancel out to one so now i have r a spin up plus well we have r beta but e to the i phi beta minus phi a and it times the spin down direction now let's do a bit of relabeling let's relabel phi b minus phi a as just some phi right since we don't since we no longer have any phi in this resulting ex expression it's not the same phi as um phi b it's just some like unsigned phi and, and we call this the i believe the global phase factor or the, the yeah the global phase so we have r a spin up plus r beta e to the i phi spin down okay now we have achieved what we wanted so you guys may be wondering, wait, why are we doing all, the, all, all of this? And I, I want to motivate um, this concept. So what, what, we, what, what, what we have done is we have taken our spinner, and we've written it in terms of purely real numbers, then, then some complex phase factor. Now, in the, at the start, in the beginning, we had um, A and B, which were purely complex numbers. And these were our... Um, degrees of freedom but now we have r a and r b which are real numbers and we have um phi which is also a real number so all of our degrees of freedom at the start were complex but now we have turned all of our degrees on of freedom uh to to be real so what we wanted to do is we wanted to, to, to make our complex degrees of freedom and write it in terms of of the of real degrees of freedom to just get rid of those icky complex numbers. Now this is complex, but i isn't any degree of freedom. I isn't isn't allowed to change because it's a concept. But phi is a variable, and phi is going to be real uh, by definition. I should have mentioned that earlier. Phi is real. So yeah, we have successfully uh, written our spinner in terms of real degrees of freedom. So now, what do we want to do? Well, now we are going to, uh, to talk about the block sphere. Oh, but also before we do that, let's talk about the about prob probabilities. So note that um, probability of getting spin up is going to be yeah r a squared. Probability of getting spin down is going to be r beta squared. Okay. All right. Now what what we are going to do is we are going to rewrite um, r a. A lot of a lot of, a lot of re rewriting in this video, but we are going to rewrite r a as um, I believe it should be cosine of theta over two. And then we are going to rewrite our beta as sine of theta over two. Now, you guys, again, might ask, why are we doing this? Well, it's, it's, we're doing this to kind, of make, to kind of make our a and our beta normalized by default, right? So we said that our a was a real number, but it can't really just be any real number it has to be a real number such that it's going to be normalized such that um r a squared plus r beta squared will be one right and writing this in terms of um of sinusoids will actually achieve this it's going to normalize it by default since cosine squared of theta over two plus sine squared of theta over two will just be one that's the trig identity so that's that's what motivated us to write r a and r beta in terms of sinusoids all right okay so now um we're pretty much done with all the um background now now we can actually study what what we, what we call the block sphere so what we have here pretty much is we have theta and we have phi uh these are these are our degrees of freedom now. Before we had R A, R beta, and phi. Now we now we just have theta and phi. That's it. And theta and phi are both real. Okay. So d depending on theta and phi, we might get a different spinner. So let's just rewrite what our general spinner is. It's R A. Um, they're not R A anymore. It's going to be cosine of theta over two, spin up plus sine of theta over two, e to the i phi spin down. 
So now what, what, what can change your spinner is just theta and phi. That's it. So for example, uh, what if theta is going to be, um, let's just choose like a random number. Let's say theta is pi and say phi is pi. So our spinner will then be cosine of pi over 2, spin up, plus sine of pi over 2, e to the i, pi, spin down. All right. Now, what's cosine of pi over 2? Well, cosine of 0 is 1. Cosine of pi is uh, minus 1. So cosine of pi over 2, uh, that's going to be 0. And what's sine of pi over 2? Well, um, sine of 0 is 0, and sine of pi is 0, so sine of pi over 2, that's going to be 1. And e to the i pi, it's minus 1. So our general spinner now, well, no, it's not like a general, a general spinner, but our superimposed spinner is going to be minus spin down. And now, what's so cool, like, what's amazing about this, so our result is normalized by default. We didn't have to try, we didn't have to try to, like, pick our A and our beta, like, out of the blue. We didn't, we didn't have to normalize our spinner state. All we had to do was just plug in any theta. We can plug in, like, a billion for theta. Well, actually, no, we can't plug in a billion for theta. I should have mentioned this earlier. Um, theta takes on values from 0 to pi. But in theory, yeah, technically we could plug in a billion for theta, but it would kind of be redundant since all of our possible, possible values will lie in the range of 0 and pi. But we can plug anything we want for theta, anything we want for phi, and our result will be norm will be normalized by default because of this amazing trig identity. So that's kind of why we switched to this uh, kind of formalism. Not, it's not really a formalism, but notation, so that our sp spinner state um, kind of normal normalizes itself. All right, let's choose, let's, let's do another, another example. Let's choose another value. Um, so again, let's just write our general spinner, spinner state, cosine, cosine of theta over two, spin up, plus sine of theta over two, e to the i phi, spin down. So let's choose, um, let's choose zero for theta, and let's choose zero for phi. Well, doing that, gives us cosine of zero, which is just one, spin up, plus sine of zero, zero. So we just have spin up. So you, you guys can play around, play around with these yourself. You can plug in angles and fees, but, and that's cool. But there's, it, there's what's really cool is, is that there is a um, geometric interpretation of what, of what we're actually doing here called the block sphere. So say, I have to draw this, I'm not that good at drawing, but I'll try my best. So here I have the z-axis. Here I have x. Then here I have y. And let's draw like some kind of unit sphere around this. And what, what I'm doing is gonna, is gonna seem completely arbitrary, but don't worry, I'm gonna talk about what this means in this in a moment. Let me just draw this from my reference. Um, so it has some point here. Here's theta. And then here is going to be phi. So what we're doing right here, um, we can actually kind of talk about this geometric wise. Now technically what, what we're doing is, is already by default geometric. So since we are dealing with them trig functions, but we can kind of like talk about spinners on the surface of a sphere. And this sphere is called the block sphere. So here, basically, um, I have some theta and I have some phi. And I start out at the purely z direction. And I can move some angle theta. And I can move some angle phi to get another point on the surface of the sphere. And this point, um, like some point on the sphere, will correspond to some, to some spinner coming out from the origin. And so let's give so some examples of that. So for theta is zero, phi is zero. Well, this means that our theta here uh, this is, it doesn't move at all, so it stays at the z um, axis, and our phi doesn't move at all, so it's so, so we just stay at the at that z axis, and that's the uh, spin up state, right? So spin up just lies uh, on the z direction, pretty much. 
And then we actually found out before that if you put in theta equals pi and phi equals pi, well, pi is 180 degrees, right? So, so here would actually be minus spin up because it corresponds to going 180 degrees theta and 180 degrees phi. And uh, you guys can try this yourself, but spin down would actually be uh, right over here. It's going to be opposite from the spin up vector. And then here will be um, minus spin down. So spin up, uh, we chose, like spin up, um, we have zero degrees theta, zero degrees phi. Spin down, it's, I believe it should be um, 180 degrees theta, and 180 degrees phi, which is, uh, no, not 180 degrees. It's good. It's gonna be. Shoot, I forgot what it was, what it was gonna be. Um, yeah. I, well, basically, some angle. I'm, I forgot the specific values, but we can plug in something and some phi to achieve the spin down position. I believe it should be like um, theta equals. 2 pi phi equals 2 pi maybe might that might not be correct though so what what we're what we what we're doing here is by simply rotating around this uh surface of the sphere we can kind of build new types of spinners this is called the block sphere now if you like google if you google qubit leave this how, how you spell it qubit online you're gonna see this block sphere and I want to uh, kind of um, make something really clear. This is not a qubit. Um, the qubit is a spinner. The qubit is a vector that kind of uh, points uh, to the surface of, of the sphere. The sphere is called the block sphere. It's not. It's not itself the the qubit. So the the block sphere is just some way of kind of visualizing spinners. Um, again, rotating along the surface of, of the block sphere will give us new spinners. And uh, uh, one big reason as to why it's used a lot is because the spin up states and the spin down states aren't um, really 90 degrees, 90 degrees from, from each other. They're actually 180 degrees from each other now, which corresponds to the intuitive of up and down. It's up and down is like opposites, right? Now, if we were to actually write down our, the spin up states and the, and the spin down state in the state space, we'd actually notice that they are actually... Um, 90 degrees from each other since they're orthogonal, right? Since um, the dot product of the spin up state and the spin down state turn, turn out to be zero, right? They're orthogonal. However, in the block sphere, it, they're spin up. Um, they point in the up and down directions. So the big reason why the block sphere is used is because um, the spin up state and the spin down state are actually up and down, right? They actually point up and down. But really, this is more of an analogy. I view it more as, as like an analogy uh, because the spin up states and the spin down states, they're orthogonal. They're, they're actually 90 degrees, 90 degrees from each other. So, this is actually a big reason why I kind of don't like the block sphere. Um, it's my personal opinion, but the block sphere, um, it shouldn't be looked at as like an actual representation of qubits or on off or spin up and spin down. It's just an analogy to make a uh, spin up and spin down kind of match our um, intuition about up and down. But really, um, the spin up and spin down is are orthogonal. They are ninety degrees from each other, and that's actually why why we chose theta over two. Because um, if we if we just chose theta, uh, then then spin up and spin down would actually be uh, actually orthogonal, like how they actually work work in the, in the real world. That's 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 why we chose theta over two. For, um, uh, the spinner state, cosine. Sorry. Also, another, another thing that I want to note is that um, if, to go from the spin up state to the spin down state, what we do is we kind of rotate by one eighty degrees. However, but to go from the spin up state and the spin down state in state space, which is, is actually the real space, this is how spinners actually work. But in this space, oh, it's only ninety degrees, right? Uh, to go from spin up to spin down in the block sphere, that's 180 degrees, but here it's only 90 degrees. And to go back uh, from spin down to spin up, that's another 180 degrees. So here it's 90 degrees, right? One rotation here um, is, sorry, how does it? Spin up to spin down, 
180 degrees, right? Here's 190 degrees. If, if we go another nine, if we go another 90 degrees, we, we actually get minus spin down, right? But here, if we rotate this again, we get spin up. And if we rotate this by another, by another 90 degrees, we get um, minus spin down, and then again to get spin up. So this is something that I really want to stress here. So spin, so, so an, a 180 degree rotation in the block through corresponds to only a 90 degree rotation here, right? So 180 degrees, spin up to spin down, so only, only 90 degrees here. Then another 180 degrees gets you back to spin up, but here you got guess it's only to minus spin up. This is why people sometimes say that spinners change signs under a rotation. If you do 360 degrees here, the blocks here, that just get, changes the sign for our spinner stick. But again, this is more of an analogy, at least in this case, it's more of, a, of, a, of an analogy. Since uh, if you if we're, if we're at the spinner by 360, by 360 degrees, you get, get the same thing. It's just that 360 degrees in the block space, in the state space, uh, they will actually line up, right? Uh, it wrote, the spinner here rotates half as much as a spinner in the block sphere. So that's so that's where the whole notion of it comes from. So you'd have to rotate this twice, since here we so here is um, 360, but this gives you a minus sign. Then you rotate 360 again, and this will give you the um, plus sign, the OG sign for the spinner state. So that's why um, people say spinners um, rotate twice to properly rotate them. But in this case, um, that's what it really means. Uh, there are cases though in like more abstract mathematics. Um, or like the spinner is viewed, viewed as like this kind of Mobius strip kind of thing. So if you're actually rotating it, it will, would change the sign in a way. This is another picture of, of like having strings attached to like the, some like atom or something. And, and like you, it's, um, I don't want to get too far off topic, but basically the main takeaway here is that um, spinners, the spinner here in this case, um, this is how it actually works. The block sphere is is more of an analogy, and I don't it's I don't like the block sphere. It's more, in my opinion, it's more of a bad analogy. The spin up space and spin down space there aren't actually um, um, one eighty degrees from each other, but they're really ninety degrees. It's just that in the block space, uh, the spinner will, will rotate one time, but this will uh, pick up a minus sign. So that's the idea of of the block sphere. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, and yeah, that is the third episode of the Spinner series. Sorry for the, all the noise. There's no, there's really like no place in my house where there can be peace. But I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. So yeah, bye.